Hello and welcome. Project Tower Basics, Lesson 1, Question 1 from my books. Um, I hope you can just about probably read the question. Uh, I'm going to set it up and I will assume you have very little knowledge of Project Tiles. Okay. The first thing, obviously, when you're reading any mechanics question, you should identify what topic is all about. Don't sit and read from the beginning to the end, try to absorb that. That's actually wrong. Um, okay, you read that very, very uh, briefly. You say, okay, it's per projectile. The next thing when it comes to projectile questions is to identify whether it's a projection ground to ground. For example, a golf ball being struck and landing back into the ground. Or is it from a height, let's say the end of a cliff, so it's being projected from there. So you just um, scan the question, blah, 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 from a point O on horizontal ground and is reaching a greatest height before he lands on the ground again. So it's a ground to ground projection. The next thing is to do a diagram. The diagram for something like this is a set of axes. It's always the same when I'm doing work with my students. So it's X and Y axis. I place the origin where the particle is being projected. And here conveniently they did call it O. And then I draw the path that the projectile is going to, to follow, the trajectory as it's also known. So it's a parabola, an, X, an upside down X squared graph. Okay, then I'm reading the question carefully and I'm putting the bits of information as I'm reading them. A particle is being projected from a point O, level horizontal ground with speed of 28. I'm going to mark the speed in my diagram. The speed I mark it as a vector, which is tangential to the projection point and I mark the units 28 never putting there uh, myself uh, the, the actual units just the numbers okay uh, at an angle alpha to the horizontal so this angle here is alpha okay and what do we know about this alpha the tan of alpha is three quarters what I normally do with something like that is I mark this information on the right so if the tan of alpha is three quarters so we got tan alpha is three quarters. We normally draw a right angle triangle. Those of us with loads of knowledge, we've done loads of these questions, we probably know where I'm going next. So it's three. That alpha is, of course, this angle here. Three to four. That's your tan. It's a three, four, five. Or you can use Pythagoras if you're not aware of what is going to happen in there. And of course, on this triangle, the sine of alpha is, of course, opposite of the hypotenuse, which is three fifths. And the cos of alpha is, of course, four fifths. It's because we need actually the sine of alpha and the cos of alpha rather than the angle itself. It's like when we're resolving forces. So let's put this information perhaps in a box. And uh, what's happening next? The particle is freely moving under gravity, reaching a greatest height. Uh, before it lands onto the ground at the point P, P is here. And I'm going to put my final bits of information, which is once I've read, is the finishing touches. This is now my acceleration in the problem. The particle is experiencing downward acceleration of G. Sometimes people put stupidly, I I'll mark it, it's not, it's not necessary to say, okay, the acceleration to the right is zero. You don't actually really need it. Okay, and the next thing that I personally do on the top right here, or here actually I can go room to actually do it here, is I mark the initial velocity components. Very, very important. What is that? Is this little picture here. There's your 28. Okay. There's your angle of alpha. And as you're resolving forces, this component, which is on the side of the angle, is going to be 28 sine alpha, while the one which is on the side that doesn't have the angle, oops, I've made a mistake, that's one on the side of the angle is the sine, good grief, I better look for another job, 28 cos alpha, I beg your pardon, and of course the one that's not on the other side is going to be 28 sine alpha. Okay, what is the significance now of this particular quantities? These are the initial velocity components the moment is being projected. Of course, the cos of alpha is 0.6. Uh, 28 times 0 0.6, 628 is uh, 84, 168. So you can use your calculator there. I have a calculator handy, by the way, for, for one. So that's 16.8 in this particular problem, because of course, the, uh, oh, actually, I beg your pardon, than the 0.6 in there. I'm making lots of mistakes today. I do beg your pardon. 
six at that point six so that's the sine of alpha that's 16.8 upwards using your calculator and uh, the other one i cannot do in my head uh, is uh, 0.8 of that's four fifths of 28 times 28 is it 22 yes 22.4 22.4 so we actually have them handy sometimes we might not sometimes we do okay so at the moment the significance of these quantities is as follows this is your u in your suvat equations in the vertical while this will be constant throughout the motion this doesn't change because there's no acceleration to the right is forever 22.4 while this will start with 16.8 when the particle is there it'll be 15 14 uh, 9 uh, 2 when it reaches the highest point the vertical velocity will become zero and then of course the velocity will be negative is pointing downwards or if you think of it as a speed component is of course three seven nine you'll be picking up speed and by the time it hits back down to p this, this the velocity downwards will be exactly 16.8 okay that's if it's ground to ground of course so let's get going now and answer the question and bit by bit so first of all part a part a find the time it takes for the particle to reach the greatest height above the ground so in other words how long does it take to go from o up to this point here op let's call this point uh, q okay so we're going to look at the vertical motion so projectiles is all about switching between vertical motion and horizontal motion what is the common thing between the two motions the time so vertical motion u a s t and v sorry i don't write suvats although i might say it uh, it's because i write these two quantities first because these are constants while these are variables so i'm projecting upwards with a speed of 16.8 that's my initial velocity upwards 16.8 subject to an acceleration which is pointing downwards of minus 9.8 what identifies this particular point well the vertical velocity will be zero and what am i trying to find the time that goes with it very simple equation v is equal to u plus at zero is equal to 16.8 minus 9.8 Rearrange it, 9.8 t is equal to 16.8, and t will be, for this particular one, 12 over 7. And uh, 12 over 7, using my calculator very quickly, is approximately 1.71. Okay, so that is the first part of the problem. That's the time it takes to reach the highest, the greatest height above the ground. Hence, determine the distance O to P. So that's the part B now. So that's part A. Part B. Determine the distance from O to P, the horizontal distance. So now we have to think horizontally. Okay, first of all, how long does it take to travel from O to P? Of course, it doesn't go from O to P like that. It will go like this. But how long does it take to get there? Well, the flight time this motion is symmetrical if it's ground to ground so if it takes 12 over 7 to get from here to q it will take twice as long to cover the entire journey oops equal there is equal to 24 over 7. so now horizontal horizontally because there's no acceleration i can actually use the formula from year nine speed is equal to distance divided by time which would normally we will rearrange it as distance is equal to speed times time and of course for something like that we can get the op is the speed which we're moving horizontally and horizontally we're moving with a constant speed of 22.4 forever for a total time of 24 over 7 and when you put that into your calculator uh, you should get an answer of 76.8 meters so that's this distance from there to there is there another way you can do that um, i just want to briefly mention because i put this silly 
zero acceleration there. I have seen that some teachers at school, sometimes they, they teach the following. I think it's fairly silly, but it does, some people, some of my students that are in the past, I've told me it does help them, particularly in the beginning. So I'll, I'll just mention it here. I personally do not teach it. Um, you can look horizontally and do SUVAT again, which is a bit bizarre. U A S T N V. So, what is the initial horizontal speed? Well, it doesn't change, but let's call it if, if, it's, if it's constant, that's the initial speed horizontally, 22.4. That's the, the moment you go projected. What's the acceleration? Of course, it's zero. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find this distance. How long does it take to cover this distance? Well, the answer is 24 over 7. And we want, of course, S. So the equation that connects this kind of things is, of course, S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. And, of course, because the acceleration is zero here, this lump completely disappears. So the displacement will be U, which is 22.4, times the time, which is 24 over 7, which, again, it will give you 76.8. It's just, I think... Uh, overly uh, un unnecessary but if it does help you please do use it okay so that's part b we found the distance op and now the question part c is asking the particle reaches a height h meters above the ground one second after leaving o so after one second the particle is at the height h meters above the ground is it on this side or is it on this side most in, in most cases, it wouldn't really matter. It will come out in the wash. But we definitely know it's on the way up. How do I know that this height H is before we reach the maximum point? It's because it's one second after projection. And I know it takes 12 over 7 seconds. In other words, 1.71 seconds to reach the maximum. So it hasn't quite reached maximum yet. So that point is here. Okay. So... Um, what does it ask you, asking us to find? Find the value of H. All right, um, I'm gonna make some room and I'm gonna do it probably, I'm not gonna keep this one up there. So part C is to find what's the value of H. Because H is a vertical quantity, I'm gonna look at the vertical motion again. Vertical motion, let's use a letter. O, P, Q, this is the point R. Vertical motion, O, 2, R. Here, really, I should have written, I'm very, very naughty. Vertical motion from where to where is just bizarre. It should have, I should have written it. I'm going to give myself a detention probably later. Uh, it's from O to Q, because it was to the, for the greatest height. So vertical motion, O to R. Let's write the particulars, U, A, S, T, and V. What do we know? We're being projected vertically upwards, okay, with a speed of 16.8, subject to an acceleration of minus 9.8. That's downwards, that's minus. And what do I know about this point? I know it takes one second to get there. So by the time t is equal to 1, okay, what is the s that goes with it? Question mark. So the equation that goes with this is, of course, S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. S is equal to 16.8 times 1 plus a half times negative 9.8 times 1 squared. That's actually very easy numbers. So my S will be equal to 16.8 minus 4.9. Uh, S will be equal to... Uh, 11.9 okay 11.9 meters okay that's in fact your height all right so height is 11.9 meters even if you left it as 11.9 with an s uh, next to it is good enough you shouldn't really lose marks okay we found the value of height and the last part of the question hence calculate the length of time for which the height of the particle above the ground is greater than height what does he actually say? He says, find for how long in time is the particle at the height which is higher than h. So basically, if we think that the height of h is here, that's 
that's the height of 11.9 meters for how long if we i don't know strike this golf ball it will be 11.9 meters or more okay this problem normally it will require some kind of complicated perhaps setup with a quadratic but for this particular problem is actually very very easy to work it out and i'm just going to draw with a new diagram so everybody can follow what i'm doing in there okay so i'm going to rub off all the uh, some of the bits that i've got in there um so and i hope i remember all the numbers so this is now how we answer this problem i'm going to draw exactly the same picture so this is like the motion or the trajectory of this ball is something like this and this is O this is the ball when it's at the meet at, at that's at, at the height of 11.9 meters which of course is the same as H this is the ball at its highest and of course this is the point P I know a lot of information about this in terms of times I know for example the time here is zero I know the time here is one because they told me it's one second after projection it reaches the height. I found that I'm at the highest point at 12 over 7 seconds. And of course, I doubled it and I said, well, when the time is there, it's going to be 24 over 7 by symmetry. This is now the height of 11.9 meters from the ground. So the particle. All these positions here that I'm shading in brown, the particle will be above 11.9 meters. So the question is, how long does it take to reach there? Well, the answer is very simple because of symmetry. So if you think about it, if this, if it takes one second to reach from O to this point here, it will take one second to drop from this position here down to the ground. So 24 over 7, take away 1 second, which is 7 over 7, will give you 17 over 7. So the time here is 17 over 7. So 0, 1 second, 1 and 5 sevenths of a second. Here is 2 seconds and 3 sevenths of a second. And here it will be 3 seconds and uh, 3 sevenths of a second. So the particle is above this height the difference between those two times. So the required answer from this picture is very, very simple. Particle is above H at the height greater than H. That's how the question was phrased. For 17 over 7, take away 1. And that is, in fact, 10 sevenths of a second. You can, of course, um, give um, a decimal approximation is of course one and three sevens and three sevens about 40, 0 0.42 approximately 1.42 it could be 1.43 if you decimalize it I don't I can't be able to type into my calculator I hope you found the first lesson interesting and you understood what I've just done okay and join me again I don't know how many lectures I will do but certainly this is the end of lesson number one okay I'm signing out